Steve with two other divers was diving in their local lake when something terrifyingly went wrong. He was a dive instructor, yet he made a terrible and irrational decision that later cost him his life. Steve was 40 years old at the time of this incident. He had been a certified dive instructor for a little over two years. He loved the sport and quickly climbed the leadership ranks as an instructor. Although he was thankful for the opportunity to teach people about scuba diving, he felt very bored making the same dives over and over again. It got a little too dull for him, so he needed something to spice things up. It was for his own entertainment, which is where it all started. A fun day of diving he had planned to go with two of the students he was teaching. Their names were Luke and Rob. So at about 8 am on a Saturday morning, Steve, Luke and Rob arrived at their local lake. The students were working on their advanced diver certifications. So Steve had three dives planned for that day that would give these newbie divers even more training and experience in scuba diving. So for their first dive of the day, they had planned to reach 110 feet. So with that in mind, all three divers got ready and then finally they set off. They reached their planned depth but it was uneventful. Nothing unexpected or hazardous happened despite the water being a little too dark and cold. However though, they got to explore a cave. It was an underground cave system. Steve had decided on the spot and led Luke and Rob on a brief excursion into this cavern system. The opening to the cave started at about 90 feet and it was fun. However, this cave was pretty complex. There were passages inside and you could get lost pretty easily. However, once they spent enough time underwater, they ascended and reached the surface. It was all good, nothing bad happened. Yet because the next dive doesn't go as smooth as the first one. During the surface interval, the two students changed their tanks but for some reason, Steve did not. They spent about 45 minutes resting before they decided to set off on their second dive of the day. So after logging their dives, they began to set off. By this point, it was about 11 am. This time they planned to not go as deep as the first one and only reach about 60 feet. So for the first couple minutes everything went as planned. But just like what they did with the cave, you know they just spontaneously went inside it. This time also they did something a little too spontaneous. Instead of following the plan, they decided to go beyond 60 feet. They ended up descending to the bottom of the lake at about 85 feet. But his things went wrong. As Luke and Rob were not the most knowledgeable or experienced in diving, they did something a little too unnecessary, or you could say a little too irrational. The second they reached the bottom, they kneed on it, causing a bit of a ruckus. It raised up a lot of silt. Steve could not stop them in time, which made him a little frustrated. When the water became extremely unclear, Steve signaled to the two young divers to stay put and then he swam away. It was very sudden. Everything happened so quick and Rob and Luke were baffled. They did not know where Steve was going. They thought maybe Steve is testing them to see what they would do in such a hazardous situation. So they decided to obediently remain in place. Now obviously only Steve would know what he was up to. However, the students obeyed the command. They remained at the bottom for a while, about 5 minutes to be more exact. But still, after seeing no sign of Steve, they were starting to get more and more concerned by the minute. One of them then decided to look for Steve. He swam around the area but still, Steve was nowhere to be seen. After waiting much longer on the bottom than they should have, they had no choice but to ascend. So they followed all the safety measures even though Steve was not around. They made one safety stop before eventually exiting the water. Once they were on the surface, they waited another 20 minutes and then called for help. A search team almost immediately began looking for Steve. They searched the whole day and still could not find a single sign of Steve. But they didn't stop. The next day came and only then they finally came across Steve, or rather you could say his dead body. Now no one really knows what happened to him exactly or how he ended up somewhere that is so hard to find even for pro recovery divers. 
However, here's the most believable theory about what happened to him. Once Luke and Rob made the mistake by kicking up silt, Steve wanted to make an object lesson out of the ordeal, so he had them wait for the silt to clear. He then decided to go and explore that cavern they explored before on the first dive. Since the cave was not far away from where they were at the time, Steve only intended to spend one or two minutes in the cave, but that plan did not go well. He ventured inside the cavern area and continued into what would be considered a cave passage. He must have been too curious to stop himself. Now, when he entered this passage, he did not use any guidelines, which was the main mistake he made. So that means if the passage was too long with a lot of turns along the way, it would not be too easy for Steve to find his way back. So just like that, he got lost and could not find a way out of the cave. When his dead body was found by the recovery divers, it was between some rocks between the passage. He was found with no air and with a dead dive light battery. He must have been too busy finding a way out of the cave and then he didn't even realize that he was running out of air. His death was ruled a drowning, a very unfortunate tragedy that could have easily been avoided. 